at an early stage, I decided to try and do a comic about the villain. And you got to remember in those days, this is in the late 70s, early 80s, there weren't really anti-heroes in comics. There were a few, but not much. The villain was never really the star. Marvel had done a couple of books. DC had tried to do a Joker book, uh, and it just didn't take. That sounds shocking now, right? Like, that should be a huge hit. So I decided to try and do a, uh, a book where the villain was the main character. I thought it would be a fitting bit of irony to have this character who was handsome and debonair and dashing and, and undeniably a brutal killer that his main opponent was the polar opposite of that, was a savage, brutish, bestial character that's on the side of good. <laughs> I would point anybody that wants to fully delve into it to the Grendel Omnibus editions, which are new editions coming from Dark Horse. But it is an actual linear storyline. The first Grendel is a fellow named Hunter Rose, who's a, uh, a prodigy who becomes very disillusioned with life and takes on a kind of Nietzschean ideal that he is an ubermensch and he becomes a very popular writer and assassin and eventually crime lord of all of New York and eventually the entire eastern seaboard. His main story arc is told in Devil by the Deed, but then there are also several collections of short stories we did, the Black, White, and Red, and Red, White, and Black, those are me writing for a very uh, just a star-studded canopy of guest artists. But they all fit within the story structure of Devil by the Deed, which tells kind of the beginning, middle, and end of Hunter's story. The sequence of the major story arcs is Devil by the Deed. That's Hunter Rose. Devil's Legacy. That's Christine Sparr. The Devil Inside. That's Brian Lee Sung. God and the Devil. That's Epi Thatcher. Devil's Reign, as in to reign, not to reign. Uh, um, that's uh, Orion Asante, the Grendel Khan. And then War Child, and following that, Devil's Odyssey, which is Grendel Prime, the cyborg. Whole lot of Grendel going on. <laughs> Grown up with a uh, fiction writer uh, and in a house uh, so full of fiction and narrative. My mother's an, uh, an English teacher. So uh, we just, we value storytelling above all else. Like I, I tell people often that's, that's our religion is, is uh, archetypes and storytelling and, and the power of narrative uh, over the, the human soul. So, um, so yeah, Grendel, Grendel was a big part of that. Um, I, I want to say I was in my young teens when I first read like the whole, the whole thing. It was hugely influential on me. I've never really read a story or seen anything that is similar to it in terms of its scope and its evolution in the art, but also the, the content, the themes. You know, it starts as a, as a pulp noir and ends as a, as a sci-fi epic. And our, um, our latest foray in that universe saw uh, uh, Grendel Prime leave Earth and actually go to several different planets. So now we have aliens involved. Um, there's werewolves, there's zombies. It's, it's just a, a really great hodgepodge of, uh, of pop culture content. And, um, and it's been really fun to be involved and, and to be pulled on board for all of this. Ultimately, when I'm coloring, I'm focusing on storytelling above all else. Rendering and realism, second or third. It, it's, it's mostly about drawing the eye, moving the eye, and complementing and heightening the, the line art. Because I tell everyone, the line art has already done all the heavy lifting here. It tells the story without your color. And so the color is, is meant to enhance and, and not distract from, from the line art. People ask me what is my favorite uh, Grendel storyline, and they're all my favorite at the time I'm working on them, you know, because again, they're all drawn from my immediate experiences. Uh, of course, Hunter Rose ro arose due to the fact that I was, you know, uh, an only child from a small town and, uh, you know, probably a little too smart for my own good, and Hunter Rose was a bit of a wish fulfillment. He was far more dashing and eloquent and handsome than I was. In Devil's Legacy, I was dating a woman who had a young child. And so for the first time, I got to see up close kind of the fiery maternal protectiveness. After we broke up, I felt very alone and isolated in the city and haunted by the memory of this relationship. That was reflected in Brian's story in The Devil Inside. Uh, after a number of years, I met and fell in love with another woman and I married into a large Catholic family. I didn't know anything about the Catholic Church, and I found that really weird, too. <laughs> so, uh, so I, uh, I wove that into the God and the Devil storyline. 
So, yeah, they're all kind of my favorite at the time. You know, I do find myself going back time and time again to Hunter Rose just because he's such a deep, dark well and such a pure kind of uber creature that <laughs> um, uh, I never seem to get tired of telling stories about. And people never seem to get tired of hearing stories about Hunter Rose. So Hunter uh, is, in fact, the uh, the character in the story arc in the upcoming uh, Netflix series on Grendel. If I had to compare Grendel to another title or narrative, you know, in, in a if you like this, you'll like Grendel sort of scenario, it's a little hard because I don't think there is anything else like Grendel. <laughs> Nothing else really covers the range of stuff that Grendel does. The one thing I would say, though, is that uh, Grendel's, a, Grendel's a tale of, uh, of loss, ultimately. Um, stuff doesn't work out in Grendel. Uh, you know, if you're looking for traditional heroics, you're not going to find it here. But if you want to challenge yourself with something beyond that, Grendel's a good spot for it, I think. So yeah, I'm I'm thrilled with uh, I'm thrilled with Grendel's history and uh, and the fact that it's such a multi-varied, dark little bag of stuff. <laughs>